name is Grace Stickman. Today I'll be giving a presentation on the career paths of Power 5 athletic directors using social network analysis. A little bit of background. I have my bachelor's from McAllister College in mathematics, and then I got my master's in sport administration from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This research is from my master's thesis that I did alongside Dr. Jonathan Jensen and Dr. Ariane Waite. Within our coursework in the sport administration program, we looked at athletic directors and their roles within college athletics. I was curious as to how did those athletic directors get to their positions? Where did they work? Where did they go to school? Uh, because in sports we talk about it's all it's it's all about who you know. Um, and there have been previous research on the uh, backgrounds of athletic directors, but none use social network analysis. And then within sports, there's been a lot of research using social network analysis, looking at um, in-game statistics, looking at uh, social media metrics, but none, again, looked at the career paths of Power 5 athletic directors. So with that, The purpose of this research is to build and analyze networks built from the career paths of current Power 5 athletic directors in order to identify patterns in career paths and hiring patterns of the institutions. So research questions, what is the career path of a current Division 1 Power 5 athletic director? Which schools or hubs and authorities for current athletic directors? And which institutions are considered most influential in the network? Uh, creating the network, they were compiled based on 65 Power 5 ADs as of September 1st, 2019. And this is important to note because there have been changes uh, within the Power 5 ADs. Nodes or institutions that an AD has studied or worked at. The edges are career moves by athletic directors. The edges are weighted by the type of career moves. So whether they went from their undergrad to a master's position, assistant AD to an associate AD, and then positions outside of sports or college sports, such as non-sports and pro sports, uh, maybe vice president, chairman, CEO, uh, those were equated to careers within college athletics. The network is one component, meaning that you can go from any node within the network to another without having to leave it. Uh, the data is collected from athletic department websites using AD's bios. Looking at the network here, it's 145 nodes and then 360 edges between those nodes. Uh, the network is color coded by the communities and the color denotes the school or institution that is the head of that community. Those are Oregon, Missouri, Notre Dame, Kentucky, Michigan, Georgia Tech, UNC, D2, D3, and pro sports. This is a graph showing the connection between uh, undergrad institutions and where the Power 5 ADs are currently. So the green bars are uh, university alumni, so ADs that work at their alma mater. The gray is conference alumni. The light blue is other Power 5 alumni. And then the dark blue is non power five alumni. So whether they went to school at another FBS school an FCS division two division three or NAIA. This slide shows the background of athletic directors. So 48% of them held a master's degree. Uh, this is a decrease from a study done in 2013 that looked at not necessarily Power 5 ADs, but athletic directors um, from, I think it was Division 1. Um, and in that study, they found that 83% of ADs had their master's, so significant decrease. 15% held a law degree, 20% had experience in pro sports, 28% in development, only 20% were former coaches, and this is also a decrease from that 2013 study where 42% were former coaches. 
75%, whereas I like administrators, and this is an increase from 66% in that 2013 study. This is showing a comparison in the career paths between male and female ADs. On average, men had between eight and nine uh, jobs to get to their current athletic director position, and women had almost two more on average, so between 10 and 11 jobs. 61% of the men held professional degrees, and four out of the four women had professional degrees. One actually has two master's degrees. 64% of the men were student athletes, and then 75% of the women were student athletes, where one of those was a dual sport athlete. Overall, 65% of the current Power 5 ADs were former student athletes, and that's a decrease from 80% uh, in that 2013 study. Here's some of the net network metrics. So as I said, 145 total nodes, 360 total edges. The diameter of the network is 11, meaning that the furthest distance between any two nodes <clears throat> is 11. The average path length, so if you chose any two random nodes within the network, on average, there's a distance of 4.6 edges between them. The average total degree is right under five, so that's counting in degree and out degree or moves into that institution and out of that institution. The modularity measures the density of the network as far as communities go, so a lot of connections within that community and then sparse connections out of that community. And there were 10 communities within the network. Uh, you can see a raw count of in degree and out degree uh, the sum of those is the total degree, so that's just the raw count of moves into the institution and out of the institution. An important note is that cyclical edges, so if someone <clears throat> went to Notre Dame, for example, and then was hired at Notre Dame for their next job as an internal hire, uh, then that wouldn't be counted in the in degree or out degree. So the weighted degrees are when we assigned value to that edge, depending on what kind of position they either came in as or left for. Um, professional sports has the highest total degree and also has the highest total weighted degree. Um, this that's attributed to uh, people in pro sports coming in at high positions as well as leaving. Uh, for high positions. If you look at non-sports positions, um, although they had a higher total degree than Tennessee and Georgia, uh, the total weighted degree is lower. So that just means that the value of those moves in general was lower than uh, if you came in or out of Tennessee or Georgia. Here's a graph looking at the movement between undergraduate institutions and uh, current institutions where they're an athletic director. Um, so there was a pattern of similar geographic regions between undergrad institutions and their current job. Um, there, uh, so 34 out of the 65 uh, movements from undergrad to current uh, were within a similar geographic region. Here's the network uh, with labels on it. So as I said before, the communities are the colors of the institution with the highest page rank within it. Um, and then the size of the label correlates to the page rank metric of that institution. These are the communities within the network. So you can see there are 10 of them. Uh, they're ordered by page rank. So Oregon, Division III, D2, Mizzou, Notre Dame, UNC, Kentucky, Michigan, Georgia Tech, and pro sports. There wasn't necessarily a relationship as far as 
the same conference or similar geographic region within the communities, uh, which is different than the connections that we saw between undergraduate institution and current AD institution in one of the networks. Other metrics that we got out of this analysis were authorities, hubs, and page rank. In the context of this research, uh, authorities are schools where people are hired at high level positions. So you come in as an AD or an associate AD. Uh, in pro sports, that might be in, uh, as far as a role of uh, CEO, vice president, things like that. So the top authorities were pro sports, Miami, Florida State, Notre Dame, and D3. Within pro sports, there were a lot of high level positions. Um, and uh, at D3, uh, it's a little surprising that they would be an authority, but it seems that people came in as athletic directors, so people weren't necessarily going to a D3 for mid-level or entry-level position. The hubs we can consider as a springboard, so they left that institution for a high-level job at another institution. And so the five institutions with the highest hub score are non-sports, Notre Dame, pro sports, Georgia, and Miami. Uh, six of the ADs coming out of non-sports landed AD positions, and two of those were at Power Fives. Uh, Notre Dame produced five athletic directors, two of those being at Power Five. And coming out of pro sports, four were hired as Power Five ADs. Moving on to page rank, uh, page rank symbolizes influencers in the network. So they were well connected to influential schools. Uh, and then in some way you could consider them as efficient in as far as the value of the positions that they hired people at, as well as the value of positions that people got after they left. So for Kentucky, um, as I said, they came in at high level and left at high level. Um, they came in only from power fives um, for Kentucky. Five out of the seven came in as associate ADs or higher. And then when they left, five out of the seven went on to power fives. The other two left uh, after they received their bachelors. Uh, Mark Coyle was one of the, the seven that left. Um, he went on to be an AD, not at a Power Five, but at Boise State. For uh, pro sports and non-sports, they left for high positions into other schools. Um, as we had looked at, non-sports had a lot of moves in and out of it, but as far as um, the weighting of those, it wasn't necessarily as high as pro sports. Um, Georgia Tech was kind of surprising for me to see in there. Uh, two people left for athletic director positions at Power Fives. Um, two others went on to work at Power Fives or in pro sports. And then three out of the seven came into Georgia Tech as the athletic director. Oregon State is another one that I didn't necessarily expect to see on there. Um, they hired three people as athletic directors, and then three of them left for athletic director spots. As far as pay drink, uh, I expected Notre Dame to be higher just because uh, so many people left for high positions going out of there, and a lot of people came into Notre Dame for positions. Um, but schools like Kentucky and Georgia Tech and Oregon State, although there wasn't a lot of volume going through there, uh, when they did, they came in at high positions and left at high positions. So some of the conclusions from this research, 
Overall, we saw a decrease in professional degrees from previous studies, a decrease in former student athletes, but an increase in former administrators. We also saw coming into the picture people working in pro sports as well as coming in from non sports positions. With the decrease in former student athletes, uh, we've kind of been seeing a shift in college athletics towards uh, revenue generating. Um, there is a shift uh, within amateurism. If you think about uh, the name image likeness that has come about in the past couple of years. So backgrounds of ADs could possibly reflect this shift in college sports. Another pattern we saw is that athletic directors tend to work at either their alma mater or they attended a non division one school. I thought it was really interesting because it kind of shows that going to a non division one um, or outside of a power five isn't necessarily a barrier to someone becoming an athletic director at a power five school. As far as a gendered breakdown. Uh, females had longer career paths, but there was a higher percentage of former student athletes as well as a higher percentage of professional degrees. So as we continue to look at the difference between uh, men and women and their careers in sports, I think it's really important to consider the length of a career that a woman has to have as opposed to men possibly. Um, and their credentials that they need in order to get to that power five athletic director position. So who hires at high level positions? So the authorities and the networks, we had pro sports, Miami, Florida State, Notre Dame, and then uh, national governing bodies, so the NCAA or conference positions. Uh, who propels athletic directors to high level positions? We had non-sports, Notre Dame, Pro Sports, Georgia, and Miami. And then who are the influencers in the network? Uh, Kentucky, Pro Sports, Georgia Tech, Oregon, and non-sports. So implications of this, um, it's really important to look at for the athletic directors and their backgrounds, not necessarily how many people have gone through there, but what other connections to the other institutions that that particular school or in the case of pro sports and non sports that they have. Um, a lot of people can go through an institution, but they might be going through there for the middle of their careers, something that we also looked at. Um, but really it came down to how many people are you hiring and what is the value? of that position. And as I said, uh, some implications. So the trends in career paths of Power 5 athletic directors, uh, more people coming out of uh, development backgrounds and revenue generating backgrounds, such as pro sports, um, the hierarchy and the hiring network of Power 5. So looking at the authorities, hubs and page ranks, and then this extends the previous research on the backgrounds of the Power 5 ADs and builds on a way to use social network analysis within sports. Some limitations that we had um, in the study, uh, sometimes there were gaps uh, within athletic directors career paths and so that affected it. So having uh, better clear information, uh, I think we can look at uh, racial and further gendered breakdowns of the career paths of Power 5 athletic directors. You could also extend it to include all FBS, D1, D2, and D3 schools. Possibly in order to fill those gaps, interviewing ADs uh, for clarification on their career paths and then extending the time period. So not just looking at uh, ADs as of September 1st, 2019, but including the last you know, X ADs from the school. So looking back as, as the last three or the last five to get a better idea of how it's evolved over time. If you have any questions, 
uh, on this research, you can email me at dickmangrace at gmail.com. I'd like to thank CSRI for allowing me to present, as well as Dr. Jensen and Dr. Waite for their continued support. So with that, 